Good morning and afternoon, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining us for teaching an integrated reading and writing course as easy as one, two, fusion, part two. We are really excited to have you, so let's dive right in. My name is Sonia Seguir, I will be your moderator, and we have our faculty partner, Tina Wilhoit, who will be leading the session. Tina? Hi, welcome. My name is Tina Wilhoy, and to begin, I'd just like to tell you a little bit of background about myself. I teach at San Jacinto College in Houston, Texas. I've been a full-time instructor there since 2010. Prior to that, I was an adjunct from 2005 to 2010, and for both of these positions, I was hired as a reading teacher. So when I was told that we would be integrating, full panic mode set in. Three questions or three thoughts raced through my mind. First of all, I wasn't hired to do this. Second of all, how do we do it? And third, am I even competent to do it? So amid all the confusion that was going on in my mind and in the minds of my colleagues, we got together and we have implemented a program. So I know if you guys are just now beginning to implement, you have some of the same anxieties and panics that we had. But after you get started, I promise you it will become extremely easy. So uh, we're going to dive right into my agenda. The, we're going to be discussing today the challenges with just even starting an integrated reading and writing course because anytime you start something new you have challenges. Then how do you even implement this? What do you do to get started you know, from the ground up? What are some of the assignments that we can give to our students that will be integrated? And then what kind of digital component will we have? So Let's just dive in and we'll go from here. Okay, our very first challenge that we came across was the challenge of time. I've never heard a teacher say, oh my goodness, I have way too much time in my, on my hands. Most of us are fighting for time. And our time challenge was we were going to be condensing six hours of classroom instruction from our standalone courses into four hours of instruction. So we had an independent reading that was three hours, an independent writing that was three hours, and we were being challenged to condense that into only four hours. So right off the bat, we're again panicked because we're losing two hours of instruction. Along with losing two hours of instruction, we also knew that we would be dealing with varied skill levels. Uh, at the campus that we teach at, we have many international students, we have many second language students, we have many um, people that when they're tested, sometimes they're tested a little higher or their score is a little higher than they're actually able to to perform and sometimes they test a little lower than they're actually able to perform which puts them in, in a little bit of a, a challenge either either way. And then how are we going to advise students on what to take? How are the advisors and counseling department going to handle this situation? Because just like the teachers, they had been used to putting students in standalone courses, and now we were asking them to put them into integrated courses. And then the final challenge that we faced was just change is hard. Anytime something new comes up, it's very hard to, to change your staff, it's hard to change your faculty, it's hard to change your students. So these were the challenges that we were being faced with. So how did we begin to implement? The first thing that we did was we knew that we needed to, to come together as a campus. We couldn't just be our own little independent, standalone people anymore. So we were going to have to, to merge, and we decided to collaborate. So luckily for us, we have good working rapport between our reading and writing teachers, and we paired up. So a reading specialist teacher and a writing specialist teacher came together to create assignments, and we did a lot of collaboration. We came up with the idea of having two levels of INRW. And our very basic level, was, level one, was going to be paragraph writing. So we would go from sentence transitions into paragraph. And in our upper level, we would go straight into essay writing. Then our second part to implement was what kind of curriculum are we going to use? Um, at that time, there was no curriculum that, that taught integrated reading and writing. So the first thing we did is we came up with a few assignments, presented them to our department chair, and we were told, no, those are not true integration. So we had to hit the, hit the running board again and come up with something that was truly integrated. And then we had to face the problem of credentialing. Uh, I have a reading background, so I was a little nervous about teaching 
writing, and I know some writing teachers said, you know, hey, that's not what I signed up to do either. So we did pair together and come together as a whole. And we didn't just work on our campus, but we have three campuses and we would have department meetings where everyone was invited to bring assignments, ideas, and thoughts, and we would work together to get this accomplished. Okay, so the assignments that we implemented on our campus were article analysis, essays, and we actually write four different types of essays. Uh, we wanted a lab component, something digital that the students could uh, have practice with at home, in our lab, and it would basically reinforce what we're teaching in the classroom. And then we would also have tests throughout the semester to see what our students were competent in. Our very first assignment that we give is an article analysis, and this is actually the assignment that I post onto my Blackboard, and it's basically having students read and just follow all the, the components of a, of a reading assignment where they annotate, they find new vocabulary, they find the main idea, they find the supporting details, and they go through here and just mark this paper up. And then after they have completely read the article numerous times, and I always say a minimum of three times, I want them to um, create a one-page summary. And for this one-page summary, I, I want it to include the main ideas and supporting details. Then I want five new vocabulary words and definitions. And if they read the entire article, and you always have that one or two student that says, oh, I knew every word, that's awesome. Then pick five interesting words that maybe someone else may not know and give me those definitions. And then three things that they learned, I want that to be uh, put into their paper as well with um, proper, proper beginning and proper end marks and then a half page response to the article. And I tell them, I don't care if you like this article, you love this article, you disagree with this article, it is your opinion. So you can tell me anything that you want about this article as long as you use college vernacular. And then of course I do want it to be um, formatted in MLA format. And I do tell them no late work is accepted. So this is my actual assignment that I use and the first the first article I actually give to them simply because I, I feel like it's important that they, they understand the difference between a good article and something they just Google offline that may not be real college level appropriate. And we go, we go from here. Then our next assignment is our essay number two, which is an illustration or an expository writing. This one is a little more challenging. Um, this comes after our narrative. The narrative, uh, I think, is a little bit easier. This one is more challenging because it's a five-paragraph essay where they have to actually embed parenthetical quotes, and they have to have a works cited page. So uh, for many students, this is the first time they've ever had to cite something within their paper. And this one, I do give the three articles for them because um, these are the topics that I chose, and I don't want them to have to search for an article or say they couldn't find something. So the first article is dealing with the English problem in the digital age, and it seems that in today's society with as much technology that we have that, and as much digital software that we have, that English should be spoken better, it should be written better, but unfortunately that's not, not the case according to research. So this talks about, you know, text messaging and different things that can actually hinder writing in today's world. And then the second one, it, they have a choice, is it's titled Pretty Unreal, Ever Wish You Could Look As Hot As Celebrities Do, Well, They Don't Look As Good As You Think. Um, beauty is a very big component in our world today, and I think it resonates with our students because everyone has that feeling of maybe not being good enough. And this whole article talks about pressures that women have, and not only pressures, but problems that come from those pressures. So if that's interesting to students, they can choose this particular topic to write about. And the last one is the Prisoners of Sex article. And a lot of students, they just say, oh wow, this is going to be another Fifty Shades of Grey article. No, it's not. Um, it's basically talking about, in today's society, it doesn't matter what you, what form of media you tune into. It could be music or a movie or a video. You're going to see some kind of sexual content. And basically, is there too much? That's what I'm asking, the, posing the question for. And if the students feel like there is too much, then they can write a thesis-centered essay and letting uh, their audience know where or how 
is the media producing too much sexual content in its um, programming today? So I tried to choose topics that were very interesting to students that were high interest level because a lot of our developmental students are not strong writers. So I want them are strong readers for that matter. So I want it to be something that's high interest to kind of pull them in. And we have discussions on these topics prior to their writing. And I do have um, this available for anybody that would be interested in using this in their classroom. Okay, so we've gone through our assignments and um, these are the things that I actually teach in class, but I did want my students to have a digital component and that's where Cengage has helped us out greatly with MindTap. When we first began, we had Applia, which was mainly just assignments, but we actually now have a MindTap component, which embeds perfectly in our course level on Blackboard. This is an actual screenshot of my Blackboard page, and my students can just log in straight here to their Cengage um, MindTap assignments. And I also have provided a link for the Cengage technical support. So if students need anything at all, they don't have to call me. They can log on to, to Cengage. Uh, give a technician their problem and they can have support 24-7, which is really great because many of our students work and they don't have time to work on assignments except on the weekend and this way they do have somebody that can be with them to kind of hold their hand through or troubleshoot a problem that they may be experiencing. So um, I'll show you a few things here and then we'll actually go into my live course. So this is what, if they click on the customer support, this is what prompts them, and they have to put the, the course that they're in, which mine is an integrated reading and writing course, but we also use Cengage uh, MindTap for our on course, so they just have to let the technician know what course they're experiencing problems with, and um, give the course name, and then give a little bit of the problem that they're actually experiencing. Then... This is a screenshot of my actual um, assignments that I've given so far for this part of the semester. And I know it's a lot, but this is from everything from the very beginning of the semester. And if you'll notice, these chapters, I'm going to actually go live and show you the, uh, uh, the contents of a book. But these here correlate with our chapters in our book. This is the first chapter, the Reading Writing Connection, and then our second ch chapter is Approaches to the Reading and Writing. So not only are they getting instruction in class, but now they have a digital component that they can go through and look at at home. And I usually try to pair some type of grammar skill along with my, um, my content that I'm teaching for the week. And you'll see I may link it with... Um, a noun lesson or a, a simple basic sentence lesson. So they're, I don't have time to teach grammar in class, but at least this way they're able to do some practicing at home or in our lab component, as well as getting the, the content from the chapter. So if they clicked on this very first chapter, the reading writing connection, it's broken down into six different little units and they have questions for each, each part that they, they read. And what I really like about this is if a student doesn't do well, they can actually, you can set your mind tap up so that a student can actually have three attempts. And then as an instructor, you can decide how you want the, the program to score your students. Some people may choose to just have one attempt and take that score. Some people may have them do all three attempts and take an average of the score. And some instructors may just want the highest average. This semester, if you notice down here, I have um, decided to keep the highest average. I think that way it, it really prompts my students to, to do well. Uh, I have done the average before, but this semester I've gone with the keep the highest and uh, I think my students like it better and I know it definitely improves their averages. And here on this particular case, there was a total of 31 questions. So what I try to do is keep my questions for the week somewhere between 50 and 70, and that's why I add a little grammar component as well. And I'll just give you one more little shot of chapter two, which is this one. This is the approaches to reading. And if you notice, oops, if you notice here, uh, there's only 40 something questions here. So I wouldn't put these two together probably. I'd probably group these with um, a grammar lesson. Okay, so what I want to do now is show you a little bit of my actual live class.
Okay, this is actually my class live here, and I really like the way this is set up because I have three different views that I can look on as an instructor, and the students actually see this when they log in too. So they have a view here where they can look at the weekly, they can go to a weekly view. This is what's due this week for my students, and if you click on it, it just shows them by week what is available here. So they have these 24 questions that they need to answer. And then it gives me scores here that I can look at. And over here, I really like this little ribbon of activities that I can use within my course. So anything that my students want to look at, they can go through here and they can just type in and research something. If they need um, a dictionary, if they're doing their article analysis, instead of having to look at a word up on their phone or actually getting a hardbound dictionary or Googling a dictionary, they have a, a Miriam dictionary right here that they're able to, to access. And this is very beneficial. It's a full own, uh, a full ebook. And I know that's what, uh, been a great calling card for my students. They don't have to carry a book. A book around in their book bag. They don't have to worry about losing a book. And you can actually bundle your book and all of your Cengage products together at a less expensive cost for students. So anywhere they have uh, internet access, they can read their book, they can do their assignments, and it's just one single sign-on so it's easy for students to keep up with. I can check their progress at any given time, so I can just log into here, and my students' progress will populate. Okay, I can expand it and look at the grades here if I need to, to see how many students have or have not done something. It's just real easy to look at in a, a, quick, a quick moment. Another component that's really good, especially if you have English as a second language learner in your class, they do have uh, the ability to have their text read to them. And that's been a real lifesaver. Some people struggle and they don't read very quickly, so they can read it to themselves and then have the book read to them, or they can have the book read first, and then they can read it, and it makes, a little bit, uh, it makes it a little less challenging for them. And one of the components I really use a lot and I like is this Questia. Now, we have an online database that we have for our school, and students use that. I teach them to use it because they may need it for another class or for my class. But we also have Questia, which is just their own online library and this is really great so whatever topic they want to research they can just type in their their subject and these are some that we've looked at this week as a class and um, they can print their article there's actually um, program a program within here that can help them cite their work cited if they need that so it's it's very beneficial and it's been very promising for all of our students and as an instructor I use it and I know my students they like it. I've had not had one complaint. So I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint. Okay, so if you have any questions about how to integrate your class, if you have any questions on assignments, if you have anything that you would like to know, feel free. You can email me here. I will be happy to send you assignments, and I do have others. I put two on this PowerPoint, but I also have a narrative assignment that I have, and then also a research assignment that I work with. So if you need anything at all, I'd be happy to work with you, and thank you for joining us. Thank you, Kina. Tina, that was great. So thank you, everyone, for joining us. If you have any questions or comments, as Tina mentioned, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you again, everyone.